The following question reads that alkynes have a homologous series of uh, are a homologous series of unsaturated hydrocarbons, and all members contain a C triple bond C. Now complete the table showing the information about the first three alkynes. Now remember, alkynes is not in your course, so you have to use your knowledge of organic chemistry to answer this question. Now uh, they have given you uh, an alkyne. The first one is two carbon atoms, a triple bond. The second one has three carbon atoms and there's a triple bond between carbon atoms. The third one has has four carbon atoms and there's a triple bond. The first thing is I need to give the formula. So there's this empty box over here. I just need to count the number of uh, carbons. So there's one, two, three and four carbons and the, the number of hydrogens as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five and six. So they're going to be C4. It's going to be C4 and H would be six. So that's the formula of the hydrocarbon. And the next thing is I need to give the name. Remember, two carbon atoms, the molecule name in organic chemistry starts with eth. If you have four carbon atoms, the name, name starts with bute. If you have a three carbon atom molecule, the name starts with prop. And we already, they've already given us the suffix, how the name is going to end. Remember, we don't know how the name is going to end because we haven't studied this homologous series. But we can take the hint from the molecules that are already provided. Uh, so the name over here is ending with ayn, y-n-e, and over here it's also ending with wine. So uh, the starting name, we must know it, it, it is based on the number of carbon atoms. So it's eth, prop, bute, and the name is going to end with y-n-e. So it's going to be propine. Moving to the next part of the question, uh, we're now being asked to complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement or inner molecule of ethane. And they've already given us the structural formula. If you look at uh, the structural formula carefully, uh, hydrogen, uh, so we need to draw the showing outer shell electrons only. So I need to complete the dot and cross. So I'm going to start off with this CH bond. This is a single bond. That means one electron is being shared over here. Then there's a triple bond between the two carbon atoms. That means, uh, and since both carbon atoms are going to have the, share the same symbol of electrons. So a triple bond means three pairs of electrons being Shared. So I've uh, I've drawn six electrons over here, three electrons shared by this carbon atom, three electrons shared by the other carbon atom. Then I have another single bond over here between carbon and hydrogen, so that's well, one electron shared each. So that would complete my molecule of eth ethane, uh, and this is the dot and cross diagram. So carbon in total is sharing, it's in group four, it shares four electrons, one over here, three uh, with this carbon atom. This carbon also shares three with this carbon atom, one with this hydrogen atom. And hydrogen only has one electron, so it shares only one electron. Now, moving to the next part. Uh, the next part is compounds in the same homologous series have the same general formula. Give two other characteristics of members of the homologous series. Now, remember, homologous series is a family of organic compounds. You have lots of billions of different organic compounds. All animals, plants, uh, fossil fuels, they're all organic compounds. So, there are billions upon billions of different uh, organic compounds and you classify them into different families of organic compounds based on certain properties you group them together if they have similar chemical properties so if the chemical reactions are similar so that's one so if they similar if they have similar chemical properties and they show a trend in physical properties in physical properties then you put them in the same uh, homologous series you can also write a third point over here that they uh, have the same functional group as well what that means is that all molecules in the same family are going to share a group of atoms that are going to determine the the chemical properties of that compound. For example, if you look at ethane and propyne, etc., they're all in the same homologous series. What do they have in common? They all have the C triple bond C. C triple bond C over here as well. C triple bond C on this uh, in this molecule as well. So if they if they share the same functional groups or group of atoms that are going to determine the uh, chemical and physical properties as well, uh, then they are put in the same uh, homologous series. So this third point could also be used. Now moving to the next part, you need to use the information in the table to deduce the general formula of alkynes. So we need to come up with a general formula of alkynes. Let's uh, have a look at the table. Now the first thing that you should do when you're uh, forming a general formula is 
that uh, the number of carbon atoms uh, is denoted by n. So, I am going to write uh, C n. So, n could be 1, 2, for example, if it could, be, if, it, if it's 2, the formula should be C2 and H2. And if it's, uh, if n is 3, then n would be 3, this should come out to be equal to 4. And if n is 4, uh, then this should come out to be equal to 6. So let me uh, rub this off. And I'm going to try and figure out a general formula. It could be, uh, if I do 2n, uh, Cn and H2n, then this general formula is for alkenes. It won't fit alkynes because uh, if I have 2 carbons, n would be 2, then hydrogens would be 4. So hydrogens should be 2, so I'm going to add a minus 2 sign to it. Uh, now the first molecule fits with this general formula. If uh, n is 2, then your hydrogens would be 2 into 2 is 4, 4 minus 2 is also 2, so it's going to come out to be equal to C2H2. Let's see if it works with uh, this uh, uh, third uh, member of the alkyne series, which is C3H4. If n is 3, so it's 3, hydrogens would be 3 into 2 would be 6, 6 minus 2 would be 4, so it's going to come out to be equal to C3H4, so that's still working. Let's see if it works with uh, this uh, other, the fourth carbon atom, if n is equal to 4. So over here it's 4 into 2 is 8, 8 minus 2 would be 6, so it's still working with this. So this would be my general formula, it's going to be CnH2n minus 2. So with a bit of trial and error, you can actually come up with the general formula, which is going to be CnH2n minus 2, and this would apply to all these uh, alkyne series. So let's uh, write this down uh, using the information in the table. Uh, it's going to be CnH2n minus 2. The next one is, uh, part D is, alkynes are unsaturated. Unsa unsaturated hydrocarbons are those hydrocarbons that have these double bonds or triple bonds. Describe a test for unsaturation. Remember, we, uh, in our course, we have only studied alkenes. And the test for um, alkenes is that you add bromine. And uh, the result is that the red brown bromine color is going to get decolorized bromine decolorizes what happens in this test basically is that if you have an alkene remember we have only studied unsaturated hydrocarbons that are alkenes so let's think of this ethene molecule if i react it with bromine what happens is that an addition reaction happens the uh, double bond breaks into and gets converted into a single bond and the carbon then completes its bond by adding bromine. Two bromines get bonded to the double bond carbon atoms. So this is an addition reaction and the bromine molecule gets used up. So the red-brown bromine gets used up so it, it eventually gets decolorized. In part E, you're being asked to name an oxidizing agent which can be used to oxidize, oxidize ethanol to ethanoic acid. Uh, uh, the two oxidizing agents that are used and we have to name them, one is potassium dichromate 6. You reflux alcohols. Uh, this is also known as K2Cr207. Or you can also write uh, the other oxidizing agent that you should remember is potassium magnate 7. So these two uh, are used. Uh, potassium dichromate 6 is basically K2Cr207. Potassium magnate is KMnO4. So these two are used as oxidizing agents. So remember, alcohols are the only substances that you, you're going to study that are going to get oxidized by these two uh, oxidizing agents. The next part is that you have to draw the structural, uh, structure of ethanoic acid showing all the atoms and all the bonds. Please be very careful when they, when they say this. You have to show all the atoms and all the bonds. So ethanoic acid has, eth means the, it has two carbon atoms. Since it's a, it's a carboxylic acid, that means there's going to be this functional group, double bond O and OH functional group would be present. So, uh, and let's complete the bonds by adding hydrogens. This carbon atom is making one bond, so there would be three hydrogens bonded to this carbon atom. Moving to part F of the question now. Uh, carboxylic acids can be converted into esters. The esters formed by reacting propanoic acid and methanol has the molecular formula C4, H8 and O2. Uh, we have to name this ester and draw its structure showing all of the atoms and all of the bonds. Uh, so we're going to try and do both of these things. Uh, the first thing is, 
Uh, let's uh, figure out it's propanoic acid. So let's draw propanoic acid first. Propanoic acid, prop means there are three carbon atoms. Uh, since it's a carboxylic acid, it's going to be double bond O and OH group attached to it. And the rest would all be hydrogen atom. This carbon is going to make uh, three more bonds with hydrogen. So this is propanoic acid. And I'm reacting it with methanol. Methanol has just one carbon atom. Remember, when you're making an ester, make sure that the functional groups are drawn in front of each other. So, so methanol, one carbon atom, having an OH, I've drawn the OH on the left side so that uh, both functional groups are in front of each other. This carbon atom would be making three more bonds with hydrogen. So that's the first step. Next step for forming esters is uh, that the carboxylic acid would lose its, lose its OH, the alcohol would lose its hydrogen, and this uh, would be removed in the form of H2O. So I'm going to remove that. Water molecule would be produced. Let's uh, get rid of this uh, OH and H. So these are going to be removed. And these two molecules, carbon has one missing bond. It's going to bond with this oxygen over here. So let's uh, try and draw this uh, in a more, uh, in a neater way now. So I've, uh, what I've done is I've brought these two molecules uh, closer to each other and I'm going to draw this bond over here. So this would be my ester link. Uh, this over here is called your ester link and this is your ester that is that has been formed when propanoic acid and methanol react together. Now the next part is we have to name this ester. Remember, esters are named in two parts. Uh, you have this ester link in the middle. You're going to name the left side and you're going to name the right side. The left side has one, two, and three carbon atoms. So three carbon atoms, the name would start with, it's going to start with prop. And the double bond O side or the carboxylic acid side, the name, the suffix is going to be O8, propanoate. And then you have your right hand side, right side to the ester link that, that has one carbon atom. So the name starts with meth. And since uh, the, this is the alcohol side, the single O side, single bond O side. This is your alcohol side. The name ends with methyl. Uh, while would be ended. The suffix over here would be O8. So the name of this molecule would be, if you put the two names together, methyl coming first, it's going to be methyl and propanoate. So methyl propanoate would be the name of this particular molecule. Moving to the next part, part two of the question, you are now uh, supposed to name another ester with the molecular formula C4H8O2. So we need to come up with another ester having the same uh, molecular formula, but it should be a different ester. So C4H8O2, what I can do is, uh, for this particular question, what I can do is, if I have this ester link over here, it's between the second and the, and the fourth carbon atom. Uh, what I can do is I can shift this ester link and put it in between these two carbon atoms. So I can draw another molecule. Uh, so it's uh, C. Then I can have my C double bond O and O ester link followed by the last two carbon atoms. So there would be three hydrogens with this, uh, two hydrogens with this, three hydrogens with this carbon atom. So this could be my other ester that I have drawn. It has the same molecular formula. It's, it's an isomer of the same one. So the only thing I've done is I've changed, I've switched the ester link. Instead of being in the second and the fourth carbon atom, between the second and fourth carbon atom, I've, I've made the ester link between the first and the third carbon atom. And now I need to, uh, so I need to just name another ester. So I've drawn the, this other ester and I need to name it. Again, the same way, we're going to do the naming in the same way. This side is your carboxylic acid side. So there are two carbon atoms, so it's going to be ethanoate. This other side is uh, your alcohol side. It also has two carbon atoms. So it's going, its name is going to end with vial. So it's ethyl. So the name of this other ester would be ethyl ethanoate. So that's the name of this other ester. Moving to part G now, you have uh, polyesters, which are polymers. And what type of polymerization you use in the manufacture of polyester, polyester and you have to name a polyester. Remember, um, polyesters are condensation polymers. So they are condensation polymers. Uh, what basically happens uh, and how are polyesters formed? 
For example, I've drawn these monomers over here. The, the two monomers for polyesters are diols, a molecule that has OH on both sides, and a, carb a dicarboxylic acid, a molecule that has carboxylic acid groups on both sides. Uh, the way polymers are formed is uh, that ester linkages are formed. Uh, the OH and H are lost. Water molecules produced. The OH would be lost by some one over here. The OH and H would be lost. So all these OH and H are lost from the middle. And if we uh, get rid of uh, these OH and H bonds, so over here as well, the OH and H are lost. This H would be lost at the end. And this H would be lost over here. And they would all link up. They would all link up and they would start forming these ester links. Uh, they would be cedyl bond O and O then cedyl bond O and O, so all these ester links and the molecule would continue. This uh, this thing, this uh, long chain is going to continue. You would have lots of monomers coming and they would all be joining together with these ester links. So this is condensation polymers. And uh, the name of a polyester, uh, one is terylene. You must remember terylene is used in clothing and in fabrics. It's used to make fabrics. So terylene is one very popular polyester.